That warning uh, from a doctor, a year to save the NHS, do you recognise that? Well, I do recognise the financial pressures across the NHS, but what I'd say is it's not just the NHS, as your previous report showed. You need to look at this as the wider picture of prevention, what we call public health, social care and the NHS together. So the call that I and others uh, across political parties in Westminster have made to the government is to say, look at this as a whole system, look at what it needs here and now, but also look 10 years into the future and do the long-term planning for the sheer scale of the increase in demand demand that we have now for health and social care. Indeed, I mean, social care is a, a topic that we've previously covered in one of our films on the show. We have now seen uh, the health secretary expand his brief somewhat. Uh, we have this new minister for loneliness. Um, do you see, though, with these, the, these ministerial changes, the government doing anything other than paying lip service? Well, I mean, they, they are bringing out a green paper on social care, and as you say, it's welcome that they, they've appointed a Minister for Loneliness. What we now need is for all of this to be tied up together. But it is an issue of funding. Clearly, that, that's important. Also an issue of workforce and long-term planning. But what I think we do need to do is actually have those really honest discussions with people about how we bring that funding in, how we make that fair across generations, and not just look at that in the context of older adults, social care, but the whole system. And I'm afraid in a hung parliament, it's very difficult to get these challenging decisions across the line, uh, because whilst everybody agrees that the health service needs more money, the challenge comes in who is actually going to pay for that. Uh, and my view is that we need to actually build a cross-party consensus to go out and explain these difficult decisions to people, because I, I'm absolutely convinced of the case that the health service and social care need more money. But what I want to see now is action, putting that in place and explaining to people who, who is going to be making more of a contribution in order for us to do that. Um, can we turn to, to, to the winter crisis? And it certainly feels as if we're, we're through the worst of, of, of that within the NHS. But, I mean, what's your assessment of just how bad it got this year? Well, it did get particularly bad, as I say, because of the ongoing financial pressures. But also, there's just that, a loss of that sort of um, flexibility to deal with bumps in the road, like, for example, the flu epidemic that we had and norovirus coming at the same time. And, and that can actually lead to the whole system appearing to grind to a halt. Now, the NHS did have a plan um, that it had put in place to try and relieve those pressures by by not carrying out routine surgery. But the trouble then is that those, those people who've been waiting for routine surgery, not only is that a huge inconvenience and, and uh, you know, really, really major problem for those individuals, but of course it then means that the whole backlog for routine care um, starts to build up. And, and that's what we, we're worrying about as well, is whether the NHS over the coming year will be able to keep its commitments to, to routine surgery, um, so routine procedures procedures, that those will tend to build up. So what we'll see is not as, as the doctor speaking to the March said that the NHS will collapse and not be there. What we will see is that waiting times will increase and, and the, the lack of the ability to deal with bumps in the road so effectively because of the sheer scale of the, the building pressure and the fact that we haven't sufficiently planned for that over successive governments. Why has there been this, this lack of planning for something which we know is going to happen every single year? I mean, you wrote this in The Express just a little earlier, uh, earlier this year. There is nothing new about winter pressures in the NHS. What has changed is that those pressures are now year-round. Uh, but in winter, the crisis is, is far deeper. I mean, it's an abrogation of the responsibility of those in charge, isn't it? Well, what we have called for, along with uh, members of the House of Lords who looked at this, is to have an Office of Health and Care Sustainability, a bit like we have the Office of Budget Responsibility, a, an office that's specifically looking at the scale of future demand and the workforce that we need to meet that demand. Because it's, it's been the lack of long-term planning that, that's very obvious to those who are looking closely at the system and the, 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 the lack of determination to look at those systems together. So it's very encouraging that, that they've now renamed um, Jeremy Hunt's role as the, um, the health and, and social care minister. But that can't just be a change of brand over the door. That has to translate into real action into the way that they organise and look at funding for the health service. So, so I think what Theresa May must do is not just go ahead with a single green paper looking at older adult social care, but broaden that out 
and bring in the funding that's realistic funding to meet the demand or at least explain to people if they're not prepared to put in the extra money in honest terms what that means for the level of services and, and I think that if the public are clearly have that set out for them what it would mean if we don't increase the funding then I think they would be prepared to see some extra uh, funding coming for, and, and that will come have to be all of us contributing to that in some way in a fair way um, but unless you set out what those alternatives are it's very difficult to have those conversations that say well this is what it's going to mean in terms of your national insurance contributions or, or your or taxation contributions uh, but we have to move forward with that uh, we, we can't keep ducking it I just want to change focus slightly for a second, Dr. Wollaston. I don't know whether you've had the, uh, the chance to get through the Sunday papers today, but once again, uh, there is a huge amount of speculation about the, the, the future, the longevity of Theresa May. What do you make of her leadership? Yes. Well, I think it's very unfortunate for people to be speculating in this way because actually undermining her leadership at such a crucial point in our negotiations I think is deeply unhelpful. So I wish those um, cabinet ministers that were out on manoeuvres would just row back because what we need is to be presenting a united front. Of course there are differences in opinion in the way that we should be handling Brexit. Everyone knows that. It's the same in all political parties, that there's a range of views around things like the single market and the customs union but to have that translate into people making threats that uh, that they will be bringing her down if she doesn't do what they want I think is deeply unhelpful uh, what we need to be doing is for, for ministers to be having those conversations um, in cabinet and not touting them all over the Sunday newspapers I think that's deeply unhelpful